If you're just starting a new podcast, you might have noticed that you have to use a lot of tools to deliver the podcast. And in this video, I'd like to tell you a bit more about some of the most popular tools when it comes to recording your podcast on the Mac, and that's QuickTime and Audio Hijack 3. Hi, I'm Daniel and I'm a Berlin-based content creator who talks about technology and all the other stuff around it. And I've been recording podcasts for over five years now and throughout my podcasting career, let's call it this way, I used so many different tools for recording. And I started with some tools for Windows, such as Audacity, which is also quite good for editing podcasts. And I also went through some mobile recording apps for Android. But now using Apple ecosystem and mostly relying on my Mac when it comes to podcasting, I've been trying many different tools that help me do it in the most efficient way. And the first tool I would like to talk about that I've been using for most of the time when it comes to podcasting is QuickTime. And QuickTime is an app that you can find on every single Mac, but its main purpose is to play videos and music. Uh, but in our case, we're going to use it for creation and you can actually use it for recording audio as well as screen recording as I'm doing right now with my Mac. So when we open QuickTime, we only have this window for opening video or audio. But if we go up and click on file, we actually have options to create a new movie recording, new audio recording or new screen recording. So in our case, you want to choose new audio recording. And here we're getting this very simple looking audio recorder, which for me is actually the best feature of the whole experience when it comes to recording in QuickTime, because it's just so simple and you don't really have to do that much. Later in this video, I'm going to talk about Audio Hijack, which is an app that I'm using for recording podcasts. But what's very cool about QuickTime is that since it comes with every single Mac, it's a perfect tool for interviews. So if you're recording an interview and you want to make sure that your guest has the highest quality possible, you can just tell them to open QuickTime as long as they have a Mac and here they can record it in a really high quality. Okay, we set some foundations, but now how to actually use it. So of course you can just simply press the record button, but there is a few more things we can tweak here. So when we click the arrow next to the record button, you can see that we can set a microphone we want to record with. So in my case, that's a microphone inside of my MacBook Pro, as well as the Samsung Q2 I have here. So now you're hearing me through the microphone on my jacket, but now when I will start recording, I'm going to record using the Samsung Q2U microphone. And as you may have noticed, I had the maximum option selected, and that means that I'm recording in a lossless quality. And both of these options are 44.1 uh, kilohertz, if that's an information that it's relevant to you. But that's something that you should have in mind when you're editing your podcast, because if your co-host or your guest is recording 48 kilohertz, then you can always downsample to 44.1 and the sound is still going to be great quality. But that's not focus for this video, I'm going to talk about it in the future. Okay, so now we have a sample for QuickTime, we can stop recording. And now we are just getting a preview that we can scrap through and basically listen to how it turned out. So what I'm just going to do is to save it on my desktop. We can check the info of the file to see what are the parameters. And as you can see, the sample rate is 44.1 thousand kilohertz and the bit rate in this case is 16. And that's because of the limitation of my microphone. But for example, if you have a microphone that supports 24 bits, such as Audio-Technica, 21,000X, uh, which is their USB-C microphone, kind of similar to this one, uh, then you can record in 24-bit, which is something useful uh, since your microphone just offers more depth to the recording. And that's something very useful because your microphone just offers you much better quality uh, so that you can use that in editing. And yeah, that's recording with QuickTime. And as I said, it's very simple and I heavily rely on it when I'm recording podcasts with external guests because it's very simple to explain what they have to do to achieve the best quality. So now we can jump into Audio Hijack and I'm not going to focus on every single feature of the app because there is so much to talk about here, but I'm going just to talk about how I use it to record my podcast. So first, Audio Hijack allows you to create sessions, which are basically presets of how you want your audio to be handled by the app. And in my case, I have a very simple session that just allows me to record audio from Skype and that's just audio of my co-host that I'm using as a backup of the recording. And I'm also recording input from my uh, own microphone that I'm using for editing my voice. 
So first let's focus on Skype. Uh, so you can see that I have this block where I can select the source uh, that I want the audio to be taken from. And here I can select something like Google Chrome if I'm using Google Meet, for example, or for example, FaceTime if I'm recording uh, using this app. You can also add your input here in the advanced settings, but for that I'm just using a separate track. And the next block is just a recorder. So here you can set all the settings for your recording. So in my case, the settings are 16 bit and the sample rate is the same as in any other uh, place I showed you so far. Here you can also set the naming of the file. So in my case, just Skype and the date of the recording. And the last block here is output device because sometimes when you're recording with audio hijack, you may not hear uh, what the other person is saying. And in that case, you just have to make sure that you have selected the device that you have connected. So in my case, it's Samsung QTU microphone uh, because the microphone I'm using has an headphone jack, uh, which I'm using when I'm recording my podcast, so I can also hear myself talking. And the next part of it is very similar. So first of all, I have the input device that I'm using for recording. So in that case, it's Samsung Q2 microphone that I have here. Then the next two blocks I have are meters that allow me to quickly see if my audio is speaking or not. And in case my audio is speaking, I just simply go to the sound setting on my Mac. And here in the input setting, I can quickly adjust what I want the input level to be for me. In case of this space, this microphone and my voice, I found 66 or 75 to be the best setting, uh, but you should also tweak that to your own microphone to make sure that your audio is not peaking. Otherwise, if your audio is peaking, you're basically being too loud for the microphone and you cannot really recover that. But now going back to Audio Hijack, we have one more block, which is recorder. And that's very similar to the recorder I showed you before. So again, we have custom audio recording settings and the settings are exactly the same as for the previous audio and the name for the file is the same so that I can quickly reference to it. And that's the basic setup I use. And there is also many filters and many different things you can use Audio Hijack for. But for recording podcasts, I want the audio to be as little influence during recording as possible so that later on in editing process, I can tweak it a bit more. Now I can showcase to you how it works. So again, you can see that it's recording and actually automatically opened Skype because uh, it was not opened. And as you can see, I have my meters here in the app so I can see uh, if I'm not being too loud or too quiet. I can also move the microphone a bit closer to me. And if I go to the sound setting, I can also confirm that I'm not speaking. And if that's not enough, I also have meters on my menu bar just in case uh, I need to see them somewhere else. You can also see that the file is being recorded here and it's also being recorded here so that I have two separate files I can work on later on in editing. Okay, so now we can pause the recording and I can go to Finder, Music, Audio Hijack, and here I have two recordings I just made. So it's important to have in mind that the recording from your microphone is of course going to be great quality, but recording from Skype is going to be the same as you heard it. So it's good as a backup in case something goes bad, but I wouldn't rely on it every single episode of your podcast. But for example, if you're dealing with a guest that may not be that tech savvy, or maybe they're using a device where they cannot record like their iPhone, then this solution might be something that you're looking for. But in my case, I always prefer to ask guests to use QuickTime if they're on the Mac, or if they're using a Windows machine, then I would just ask them to use something like Audacity. Both of these apps are very simple to set up and you will get way better quality than just by using Skype recording. And I also think that Audio Hijack is a great tool if you want to step up your podcasting game. So for example, if you just bought an audio interface that you connect to your laptop via USB, then you can, for example, connect multiple microphones and then Audio Hijack is going to recognize all of them. So that later on you can record every single microphone to a separate file and that gives you even more flexibility later on in editing. And there's plenty of other things that Audio Hijack is useful for, like having live streams or even recording YouTube videos if you want to have more advanced audio setup. And what's most important is that it allows you to record audio from your laptop. And if you would like to record your system audio using QuickTime, there is some solutions such as Soundflower, but that's way more advanced than just using Audio Hijack, which on its own gives you so much flexibility and I think it's really worth the money. And I'm saying all of these things just as a user of the app and I was not sponsored by Audio Hijack. I actually paid for the app with my own money and I highly recommend using it if you're a podcaster. So yeah, that's it for this video. If you have any questions regarding recording a podcast on your Mac, be sure to leave them down in the comments. In the future videos, I would like to show a bit more when it comes to my podcasting workflow and how I work on my shows. So if you like to see these videos, be sure to subscribe to this channel and yeah, see you in the next one.